Hello friends, in class 12th, the P block elements, we were discussing about group 16 elements and in this video, we will discuss about anomalous behavior of oxygen, reactivity with hydrogen, properties of hydrides of group 16 elements, reactivity with oxygen, reactivity towards halogens. First, see the anomalous behavior of oxygen. This is due to its small size, high electronegativity, and absence of d orbitals one typical example of effects of small size and high electronegativity is the presence of strong hydrogen bonding in h2o which is not found in h2s that's why h2o is liquid while h2s is gas at the normal condition of temperature the absence of d orbitals in oxygen limits its covalency to 4 but in practice rarely exceeds 2 in all the compounds of oxygen generally covalency of oxygen is 2 on the other hand in case of other elements of the group the valency shells can be expanded and covalency exceeds 4 reactivity with hydrogen all the elements of group 16 form hydrides of the type H2E, where E is the group 16 element. Acidic character increases from H2O to H2TE. The increase in acidic character can be explained in terms of decrease in bond enthalpy for the dissociation of He bond down the group. From this table, you can see. If you go from H2O to H2TE, this bond length is increases. That's why bond dissociation enthalpy decreases. Okay. And due to this decrease in bond dissociation enthalpy, their thermal stability will also decreases from H2O to H2PO. And all the hydrides except water processes reducing property and this character increases from h2s to h 2 t three properties acidic character increases from h2o to h2 t thermal stability decreases from h2o to h2 po and reducing properties also increases from h2s to h2 t and these are depends on the bond length and bond dissociation enthalpy now see these hydrides can be arranged in increasing or decreasing order as per the properties like stability as we discussed h2o is the most stable and h2t is the least stable and that's why reducing property is reverse h2t is most reducing while h2s is least reducing and that's why acidic character is also increases from h2o to h2 if we compare their melting point and boiling point generally this is increases down the group why this is increases because these hydrides have van der Waal force and van der Waal force depend on the size and molecular mass size and molecular mass increases from top to bottom that's why melting point and boiling point will also increase but water exceptionally has highest due to intermolecular hydrogen bonding you can see from these values this is for water and this is for h2s and these are for remaining hydrides okay so if you want to arrange these hydrides according to their boiling point and melting point we can say h2o as the highest then h2te h2sc and h2s same order for the melting point reactivity with oxygen all these elements form oxides of the eo2 and eo3 type where e is the again group 16 element ozone and sulfur dioxide are gases while selenium dioxide is solid reducing property of dioxide decreases from so2 teo2 SO2 is reducing while TeO2 is an oxidizing agent. Why? Sulfur dioxide is reducing agent because sulfur has a d orbital so it can easily expand its oxidation state plus 4 to plus 6. Oxidation state increases, 
oxidation takes place that's why reducing agent okay reducing agent is there but in case of teo2 te is a heavier element and due to inert pair effect the te does not expand this is does not expand its oxidation state from plus 4 to plus 6 that's why this is oxidizing agent besides eo2 type sulfur selenium and tellurium also form eo3 type oxides like so3 seo3 and teo3 both types of oxides are acidic in nature reactivity towards the halogens Elements of group 16 form a large number of halides of type EX6, EX4, EX2. That is hexahalides, tetrahalides and dihalides. Okay, where E is the group 16 element and X is the halogen. The stability of the halides decreases in the order. F minus Cl minus Br minus I minus. It means fluorides are the most stable and iodides are the least stable. Among us, hexahalides, hexafluorides are the only stable halide because fluorine being most electronegative element. And all hexafluorides are gaseous in nature. They have octahedral structure. You can see the structure of SF6. SF6 is exceptionally stable for static reason because of the comparable small size of sulfur atom with the fluorine atom and so the steric factor of f minus atoms occur which do not allow other species to attack on sulfur and that's why it is exceptionally stable and not hydrolyzed easily now if we talk about the tetrafluorides then sf4 is gas sef4 is liquid and tef4 is solid and in these fluorides, hybridization is sp3d. And when hybridization is sp3d, the structure is trigonal bipyramidal. Okay. But in this case, four bond pair and one lone pair is there. And this lone pair of electron occupy the equatorial position. That's why it's geometry regarded as CSA. You can say this is SF4. Okay. SP3d hybridization. But this is a one lone pair of electron okay this is CSA geometry all elements except oxygen form dichlorides and dibromides these dihalides are formed by sp3 hybridization and have tetrahedral structure but again hybridization is sp3 but it means total electron pair are four but out of four two lone pairs that's why its shape becomes band shape. You can say this is SCL2. The well-known monohalides are dimeric in nature. For example, S2F2, S2Cl2, S2Br2, Se2Cl2 and Se2Br2. And these dimeric halides undergo disproportionation. I think you are familiar with this term. That is same substance undergoes oxidation as well as reduction. Se2Cl2 will form SeCl4 and Se. Okay, student. Thanks.